Uh, it's kind of embarrassing for me to glean on the art side because I don't have that time. I really don't. Is the pro what is important is like Shane says, get through that scene. At least talk about it. Get through it. And just throw a couple sketches down there and like help everybody understand we're not going to shoot this side of the room or whatever. Um, and I'm always just terribly envious. I want to know where the camera's going. So this guy comes down the steps. We cross behind him as this character goes to the bench. Now we're over his shoulder on this guy. Then the girl comes in. We do a wide. And then the girl sits down. And now we're over this guy's shoulder. And then the actors show up. They go, I'm not sitting on a fucking couch. <laughs> <laughs> But Shane, when, when you do the storyboard, that's, that saves time and that saves money. Because the lighting guys know what you want. Yeah. The cameraman knows what you want. Everybody knows what you want without spelling it out. Well, it, it just makes people feel safe. It may not save time, but it makes people feel that they're covered. I, sometimes you do stuff, you know, give someone a physical, give them a placebo, tell them they don't have cancer. You know, maybe... <laughs> and, and, and no, there's another comfortable. Cancer and full making. I mean, in other words, it's, it's just about making sure everyone feels like they've touched bases because the worst thing you can have is a lingering doubt in the back of your mind that you didn't do your preparation thoroughly. That is what will unnerve you enough to ruin the process. Uh, when you were writing Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, going back to that, did you know at that time that you were going to be directing it? Yeah, I was hoping to. Uh, it took a long time to write. Uh, it was very different. There was no mystery in it, of course. It was supposed to, I was idolizing this guy at the time. James Brooks was my mentor. Uh, the guy did broadcast news and goes against and all those films. Uh, and I thought, I'm going to do a romantic comedy. And uh, it didn't work. It was just, yeah, I gave it to him at one point. He liked it up to page 30. He said, I have no idea where you're going with this, man. <laughs> I don't understand this, this thing. That it's dark, it's weird, it's creepy, and it's unfocused. And I, and he basically withdrew his support. Wow. And so I, I said, well, what am I going to do? And I just said, you know what? As, as tacky as it sounds, i got to put a murder in it, and then I can do it. <laughs> and so I added the character of detective. He happens to be a gay detective. Uh, and uh, once I did that and put in a murder plot, I found an old book that I liked from the 40s, and just borrowed the plot, paid for it. Um, and then I cut most of that stuff out, but I, what lingered was, now it was a thriller. And as a thriller, I could do it. And uh, it, it just, uh, I, I knew I wanted to do it. It took a long time. No one remembered me by that time. I walked into offices. They said, yeah, we don't like you. <laughs> uh, walked into offices and said, who are you? One kid told me I had a big future in the business. This was like 2004. It was 25-year-old shot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you know, all of a sudden, the glory days were, the salad days were, you know, that was, the salad was wilted at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but one producer, Joel Silver, believed in the script enough to, to let me do it. And even then, it almost got canceled because he said, you know, we can't get actors for this. Every actor in Hollywood turned it down. And finally, Val Kilmer, I mean, it was great. Val Kilmer at that time was no one's choice for uh, leading man. He had a terrible reputation at that point. Island of Dr. Moreau. Yeah, it was a horrible bomb and went way over schedule, and he was considered a nightmare. And um, you know, I had no problem with him. He was great. What do you think the secret was? You know, I, I know from that time that, that, that Joel had some ideas about having to be a bigger movie, and then the act, you weren't able to get the actors that you both were interested in. At what point did were you able to come around to settling on a smaller budget and doing this just because it was the only way to do it? It was two weeks out. And we had tried one. So you had a start date set, all right? Yeah, we had Robert Downey, who was at the time uninsurable, right? Who was, <laughs> I don't know, going out of school or not. I mean, you got to know him for going into Joel's office because he was dating, who now is his wife, Susan, who was working there as one of Joel's producers. And so better. <laughs> <laughs> no, at one time, I asked Susan out at one point. I didn't. I looked like I was going, and she looked like I was she ran from the room and she sensed it. We <laughs> <laughs> saw where that, the wind was blowing. Um, <laughs> so, I, I mean, it's two weeks now we've got to try Harrison Ford, Warren Beatty, Mel Gibson says, I'm not fighting a gay guy. You know? um, everybody at that time, Kevin Costner we approached, and we almost scrapped the movie. Joel said we're shutting it down. I said, just 
please try Val Kilmer. He says, are you kidding me? We're looking at Warren Beatty. Now you want Val Kilmer? Val Kilmer can't get a job. So why did you have faith? Why did you have faith in him at that time? Because I didn't. I just wanted to make the fun. <laughs>